plastic flow sheets. Um, and, and at that time, we began, began to come, become very concerned. On June 8th and 9th, General Studer goes with Rick Hoblet on his surveillance flights over the volcano. You have the sound of the helicopter, which is, a, is that thump, thump, thump that all of us remember from Southeast Asia. The doors are open, you know, you hear the wind, and you see how big it is, and you're so close to it, you feel like you could reach out and touch it, but you're afraid that if you did, it'd burn your hand. There was no doubt that there was something going on underneath this ground and that it wasn't happy. It was not a happy camper. On the morning of June 10th, General Studer orders a full evacuation of Clark, leaving behind only a 1,500-person security force. The top priority for Clark officials this morning was getting people safely out of the area. Staging areas were set up on the Clark flight line to make the evacuation of over 14,000 people as smooth as possible. Here you go. Have a safe trip. Thank you. Thank you. We just got here 12 days ago. They didn't tell us we were going to do this. Now we're on vacation. You have a good day. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye, kids. The evacuations now underway affect hundreds of thousands of people. The scientists know they have risked a lot predicting an eruption at Pinatubo. Every hour that passes without one heightens the tension at PVO. That was a period of, of falling off in our spirits. We were then beginning to really second guess ourselves. We were fundamentally sure something was going to happen, but then we started asking the what if. What if this waits a long time? What if it doesn't go? What if we you know, made a huge mistake? evacuated Pinatubo erupts. All remaining personnel hastily retreat to the far side of the base. Hey, I was up at the wall. When I got the heck out, I seen that thing started going, and I was gone. I think my underwear is about two and a half miles that way. <laughs> Came straight up, yeah, about this fast. Yeah, was there, did you hear any sound or anything? When that first big blast happened on, on, on the 12th of June, there were several airmen around us just, you know, looking at this thing and, you know, this is a, st uh, you know, just being awed by this, where I was, you know, I was joking, yeah, cool, all right, that's great. I mean, you, you, it, it was more of an emotional release. You know, one, it was a spectacular blast, and second, the, our, you know, what we had been saying was, was right on about this, the volcano, that, that, that we had really nailed it. And, and there was a lot of excitement about that. You know, people after, after the first eruption would come and say, was that the big one? Was that the big one? I was like, no, I don't, I don't think that was the big one. That was, uh, you know, you try and make a, make a uh, analogy or metaphor, you know, no, that was like a throat clearing. Uh, thing or you know a vent clearing phase you know we knew that june 12th wasn't the, the big guy that was just the uh the volcano saying okay i'm gonna do it i'm ready and this is you know these are appetizers This first eruption covers the once green area near the summit with a thick blanket of gray ash. 
And there's lots more where that came from. This sucker is huge this time. We got to get out of here pretty soon. That stuff gonna come down right on us this time. Appetizer scale eruptions and accompanying retreats to the far side of the base continue day and night for the next 48 hours. With each eruption, communities as far as 50 miles from the volcano are showered with ash and sand. While all this is going on, a major typhoon is heading straight for the central Philippines. It will reach the Pinatubo area within the next 36 hours. Journal entry, 14 June, Friday. Been here 19 days, I think. Seems like forever. 0645. Call Ewart, ask what's happening. He says it's still rocking and rolling. Wonders what's keeping the lid on. 2100. Dave calls a meeting. It doesn't work. People are too beat. 2217. Go to bed. Exhausted. On the 15th, Pinatubo serves up the main course. From 2 a.m. on, there is a continuous eruption punctuated by massive explosions that send ash 100,000 feet into the air. At daybreak, when the eruption becomes visible, it appears to be over 10 miles wide. Pyroclastic flows roar down from the summit in all directions. Even from 15 miles away, these flows overwhelm the horizon. Somebody give me the date and time. Saturday. Oh, oh, 600. This is the largest one we had so far. The 6 a.m. explosion is the fifth of the morning. It is large enough to create lightning as part of its own weather system. At 6.30, rain from the leading edge of Typhoon Yunya hits the area. General Studer calls it quits. He orders all remaining personnel to abandon the base. 0720, essentially monochromatic one hertz tremor, rail to rail. 0725, pack our stuff and split. We're the last ones out. We, we got down the road five miles, and we, we decided that we had been um, s lacking in courage and, 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 and proper you know, objective viewpoint, that things weren't really that, that bad. Can you tell us what the situation is like now? Uh, yeah, we've, got a, we've had a big eruption, and we are uh, been discussing what to do, and we expect to go back right now. And so we returned to the base and got our equipment all going again and started looking at these eruptions. And by that time, the eruptions were having, with, with increasing frequency, there was a low-level wind shear from, from, from this typhoon that was blowing ash right over Clark Air Base and where we were. So there were periods of 15 or 20 minutes when we were just dark. It's like the middle of the night. It was raining. It was raining pieces of pumice that were that ranged inside from two or three inches to five or six inches big. Those kinds of things were coming down, and if you went outside, they came down on you. Um, but the biggest thing was you could not see, you could not hear, 